Oh, this is so cool. Check this out, guys. I got a slider and a gimbal and a phone app that controls the whole entire thing. And when I press play... Hey, how's it going guys? Hope you guys are doing well and not too hungry because this slider is called the hot dog and this motor right here is called the bun. So go grab a plate because there's going to be plenty of hot dog jokes throughout the video. <laughs> so exactly a year ago, some of my YouTube buddies and I made this YouTube video titled Will Camera Gimbals Fade Away in the Future? and said this. Now imagine instead of having this really expensive motorized head on top of a slider, having a part of the gimbal as the head. And now? The future is here. So we'll take a look at the slider capable of merging with your existing Juin gimbals and some of your DJI gimbals. Since my main drivers are Weeble S and Crane 2S, that's gonna be an example. But if you have one of the DJI gimbals that's compatible, the concept's very similar. If you're interested on this slider for the gimbal reasons, uh, you definitely wanna take a look at till the end of the video because my recommendations aren't really straightforward. To get to that, let's talk about the slider first. As usual, we're gonna talk about the pros and cons. So the first pro of this slider is the value you get for this package this is the 31 inch hot dog uh, there are longer hot dogs out there there's the 39 inch one above this and there's smaller ones but i find 31 inch to be perfect size uh, yc onion no matter what you do do not name your slider sausage so what do you get with this 31 inch hot dog? So the whole thing comes in this carrying case. It's pretty standard these days, this soft case you get for most gears. But what's cool about it is that it comes with, so what do you get? You get a bunch of these cables. So this is really cool guys, because usually when you get a slider, they don't give you all these cables and you have to buy them separately and they're not cheap. But this slider comes with all these shutter release cables. So this comes with two different Canon shutter release cables and you get one Panasonic and you get one for Sony, which I will need. Um, and you also get this extra belt because this is probably the only wearable item on this slider. So you do get one extra belt, I have one here. And you also get this power cable in case you want to actually power this motor with the power bank or on the wall. Um, so this does come with a battery. This is the 960, 970 series, which is pretty big one. But you also get a charger with this too, so you can charge that. And it comes with this quarter 20 to 3.8 converter. So this is actually 3.8 right now, but you can actually convert it to quarter 20. And of course it comes with the motor here. Oh, and we can't forget, <laughs> it comes with extra hex keys. Cause you know, all filmmakers actually need more hex keys, but you know, just in case you need one more, it's here. So these are all provided, but another value on this slider is the fact that this right here is not aluminum. This is actually carbon fiber, allowing this whole entire slider to be extremely light. And this whole entire thing was $390 currently on Amazon. And the second thing I like about this slider is the fact that it has this powerful silent motor. I'm gonna put a little asterisk on that word silent because there's a little thing to it. So let me go ahead and install this to show you. So the whole entire thing is held by two screws, but before I put that screw on, let me show you how the belt works. So the belt installation is gonna go like this in case you're not sure. So the belt, the teeth is gonna face down and you're gonna loop it around all the way like this. So you simply attach the belt on one side, it's actually magnetic, and then the other side to that. And let's go ahead and line it up. And we're gonna put the screw in. And the final touch is gonna be tightening the tension of the belt. So I do need a hex key after all. So let me go ahead and take one out. I think it's the medium size. All right. Yeah, I think that's about good. So there you go. All ready to go. All right, so let me clear this out so I can show you. So here's what I mean by why I said asterisk with the silence. So when the motor power is full 100%, it is very loud. I'm gonna go ahead and put my lab mic close to it so you can hear it. You guys hear that? So it sounds like there's like a musically humming noise. So that was 100% motor power. Now, if you watch a lot of the reviews on this slider, most people say this slider is a little too loud for interviews. However, I found a little secret to it because I actually tested every single percentage of the motor power and I was very surprised to find like a changing point. So the magic number here is 58%. Let me show you. So I'm gonna go ahead and dial the speed down to 59% and take a look at this. So this is the noise level at 59% motor power. 
power. Uh, this is total ASMR. I'm not making out with the slider, I promise you. But here's the sound. All right, you guys heard that, right? Now, I'm gonna change the speed down to 58%. Now, I am going to amplify that sound a little bit so you guys can hear better, but the difference is huge. They were at the same level. So I'm going to go ahead and place this slider into the position I have in the current camera and show you what 58% speed looks like because you have to determine if that speed is too slow for your interview style. So let me go ahead and change it up. All right guys, so this is what 58% motor speed looks like. I have some object in the background. I did place an object on the foreground so you guys can see like the parallax effect. Ideally, you wanna have a little bit more space in the back to see that effect fully, but this is what it sounds like and this is the look of it. Now, if this is too slow for you, this slider might not be for you because right now I don't hear anything. The motor is silent. I have a lab mic here. This is a Rode Wireless Go. Yeah, I hear nothing. I hear more noise in the back. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and switch the motor to 100% motor power. All right guys, so now we're at 100% motor speed, so it is dashing through that slider. This is at full speed. Again, I don't really hear much from where I'm standing, but I can see how this could be a little bit distracting if the room is really, really quiet, and then the interview is a little bit picky, they might get distracted by this noise. So this isn't the ideal speed for the interview, but it is possible from production point of view that you can record something and like not hear much. Yeah, I hear more birds outside than the actual slider. And we're back. All right, so you might be wondering like, what am I gaining for that cost of the motor noise? And that is power. This motor is capable of doing 20 kilograms on a flat surface, guys. That's 44 pounds. If your camera is 44 pounds, yeah, God help you. Um, but what's most impressive is that it actually is able to go vertically and the weight limit for the vertical movement are 6.5 kilograms. That's like 14 pounds. So I was able to put this gimbal this is sigma 24 to 70 dgdn which is a pretty heavy lens and as you can see yeah i can handle that no problem uh do take a note that i did use a tripod flu head on top because you want to make sure that your point of contact is not like in a stress uh, so the bottom of the gimbal is kind of skinny so you want to make sure you have a pretty good contact with the base but yeah that is pretty impressive. All right, so the third thing I like about this slider is the design. There's a couple quirks, we'll talk about it later, but mostly it's a great design. You see the background I'm coming from, I used to use Rhino sliders, and one of the things I really hated about that was that uh, they had a control module that was separate from the middle. You had a cable running across it, and that is a disaster waiting to happen because there's a roller here, roller here, and here, and the cable will constantly get caught, and you're in the middle of the interview, and you know, get caught. <laughs> and make that noise and you have to ask the person like could you say that again I know you're really passionate about that moment but could you repeat that yeah that is not a situation you want to get into so I love the fact that the control module and the motor everything is just in one place so there's no cable running across it and that's partially thanks to this really cool center rod design this center rod allows you to pan the camera without actually having a pan motor in the middle and you're able to determine the pan ratio depending on how far you adjust this rod so that is very innovative all right so the last design choice that I love about is, I'm gonna flip this over if you guys can see, is the rubber feet that's on here. This isn't just any kind of rubber feet, it is very round. And I have to tell you, I don't know how many times when I had a flat feet, I will lay this on a flat on a rock surface or something uneven, and it's very hard to even the whole entire slider, and they'll always have some kind of give to it. Whereas in this, you're able to put that rubber feet exactly where you need to, you can adjust it, and the whole entire slider is very stable no matter what the surface situation is. Okay, last thing I like about this slider is the fact that you can integrate gimbals such as this Weevil S into the slider. All right, so I'm gonna take this uh, tripod head off and I'll show you. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is convert this 3 8 to a quarter inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that converter in and I'm gonna attach the trans mount quick release plate uh, right on top. Here you go. So now it is ready for my Weeble S. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly release this from the tripod and all you gotta do is just slide it down. Voila! And of course, the best part about this whole entire gimbal integration is the fact that it is very, very easy to control with the phone app. So let me show you. Currently, I have both gimbal and the slider on, and I'm going to use this YC Onion app. So I'm going to launch that. And you can see that I connected it before, so it's showing up. But all you have to do is just hold down your slider, 
and then just hold down your gimbal and enter interlink mode. And just like that, that is the whole entire thing, guys. So I'm able to connect both gimbal and the slider into one app very easily. So it says confirm point A. So let's go ahead and set a point A. Let's say, yeah, that's about good. That's a starting point. So I'm gonna set point A and you can control your gimbal where it's gonna point to. And then you're gonna set your first point. You're gonna hit that plus button. That is your first point. And then let's say I'm gonna move over to the right a little bit. There you go. That's eh, about good. Let's say it's the second point, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera up a little bit. So that is your second point. Let's set one more point just to be sure. I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the right just even more. There you go. And let's say, yeah, that's about good. I'm gonna point the gimbal down and maybe to the left a little bit. Okay, and set point three. And then when you're done, I'm gonna hit set point B as to finish the whole thing up. And this is a video shot and you're ready to go. And if I hit play, there you go. It's gonna repeat that motion over and over again. And you can put it in cycle so it can go back and forth and you can just do it once. So it's pretty cool because before I had to like set the slider up separately from the gimbal using two different apps, possibly two different phones. It was just really hassle. Now it's all integrated into one app. So that is an innovation. Okay, now we talk about the con of this slider, AKA limitation you should be aware of. And the first limitation is the fact that there isn't a ton of documentation. So you get this tiny little manual. Uh, it's more like a quick start guide doesn't have a lot uh, to get you started and like fully be aware of this slider so I had to look around a bunch of times now there are some YouTube videos available by YC Onion so I'm gonna link those in the description below too but again I had to like hunt around quite a bit to find out what is going on with this slider for example if you want to reset the A point and B point without the app and just by this control module there isn't a lot of buttons for you to play with so I found out quickly to do that all you have to do is just there's a scroll wheel right here, which controls the speed. Uh, you just have to hold down that scroll wheel, one, two, three, and there you go. It resets the A point and B point, so you can set that manually here. What confused me a little bit is that there's a little bit of give on this scroll wheel. So you might be thinking like, left, down, right, a dogen. Yeah, it's not a joystick. So even though you can kind of move it that way, yeah, that's not it. So don't try to do that. This is probably the weakest point of this whole entire slider. In actuality, I was trying to figure out how to set the loop when you do the motion. So to set the motion in the loop, all you gotta do is hit that power button once, and now it says cycle instead of once. So that's how you loop it guys. Yeah, I just saved you like half an hour looking for that info. <laughs> Which brings me to second thing I don't like about this slider and that is you cannot control certain aspect of this slider with the app and certain aspect you cannot control with the actual control module physically. What I mean by that is for example, as you can see, there is a speed which the motor you can actually adjust but I cannot adjust that on the app. Like I can do all this. Yeah, you can't adjust it until you physically spin the dial. And what's cool is that it's reflected on the app. As you can see, yeah, so you see how it's changing on the actual app, but I cannot control the speed on the app. Yes, yeah, so that's one thing. And one of the things you cannot control from the physical control module is like detail time-lapse mode. So on time-lapse mode, you have all these little, little details that you can adjust. Yeah, there's no menu for that physically. So for time-lapse, you do have to use the app, but I wish the integration was a little bit more seamless. So everything is controllable from both ends. Now those are software flaws, which can be addressed by firmware updates. So hopefully we'll see some changes in the future, but next couple of things, it's physical, which is permanent. So first physical, thing I don't like about this is the slider fix knob because when you tighten this this does lock the mechanism so it doesn't like slide around when you're traveling and transporting in fact I made that mistake again so <laughs> There's no indication of this being locked. There's no like red dot that's indicating like this is locked. You know how on gimbals, when you lock the axis, it'll tell you like, yeah, your axis is locked. There's nothing that's indicating that. In fact, this whole entire time, guys, I had this kind of tightened. Because the motor is so powerful, it doesn't care if this is locked. It'll just keep moving. It's probably wearing down the carbon fiber a little bit. So yeah, that is a slight design flaw, more from the user perspective but I would love to see some kind of indicator that says this is locked. 
Another physical characteristic I think that's going to help the user a lot if it improves is the center adjustment rod. Now when you adjust the rod according to the lens and the you know physical distance from the interviewee or the actual object, it'd be really nice to actually have numbers and notches, kind of like the quick release plate on gimbal, you know how there's like notches and numbers there. So you can remember where you were last because uh, once you adjust that you have to constantly go back and forth to find that center. It's not like when you turn off the whole entire system it's gonna actually like forget that setting so it's cool that once you set it yeah you can turn this off take a break come back it's exactly where you left off but then again when you pack it up and come back yeah it'd be really nice to see that little notch there to remember like that's where I was last yes technically you could actually write it yourself but I would love to see that from the factory that would be awesome Okay, so the last con of this slider, and going back to the statement why this isn't a straightforward recommendation from me, is the fact that the gimbal integration is not always perfect. So what I mean by that is when you set your A point and your B point and you do the motion, it doesn't exactly follow that because sometimes the motor will go first before the gimbal starts spinning. Meaning it's not gonna be exactly centered if you're doing an orbital shot. What this is, it's not a precision motion control device. It's more like create a move and it'll follow that move kind of device so I'm able to create a shot like this but if I were to do it like a cloning effect you know how you can place yourself across the screen and repeat that motion over and over again yeah that's not gonna work because every time it goes back and forth it changes just a little bit slightly and not every single motion is exactly same as the previous motion and don't get me wrong, this slider by itself is great. So I say the gimbal feature is more of a bonus. Like, you know, like when you go to 7-Eleven and you get a hot dog and the cashier goes, hey, hey, you can get one more free with that hot dog purchase. And you're like, oh, really? Yeah, it's kind of like that. So it's just a little bonus that you can get on top. But, you know, this slider by itself is solid. I did some time lapse with it and it didn't skip the picture. So reliability in terms of time lapse is great. But most importantly, I was able to get creative shots and get my creativity out because of the slider. So I'm keeping this one, but hey, you made it to the end of the video. So that's impressive. Thank you so much, guys. Um, so I did do a gimbal giveaway recently and I believe the giveaway is ending tonight. So I'm going to send you over to the future say tonight and he's going to do the gimbal giveaway announcement. So here we go. Well, thanks, Pat Say. All right, so this is future say. Claire Clearly, I couldn't stay up till 12 o'clock at night to do this drawing, so this is the next day. <laughs> My kids are here with me. We're just gonna go with it, okay? <laughs> Otherwise, I'll never finish this video. So, here we go. This is whole entire thing is gonna be one take, drawing the winners. I'm rolling here, rolling there. Everything looks good. You guys ready to help? Yeah. Okay, all right. Oh, my computer went on standby. So <laughs> we had a little over 100 people enter this giveaway. Everybody gets about six entries approximately. Yes, we're gonna do this very soon. Um, so yeah, it's really good chance you might be winning. Uh, think about like about 1% chance winning. So anyways, without further ado, let's go. Let's see who's entered. Uh, I'm not gonna read over every single country, but we got Switzerland. You got good old USA, Mexico, yes, yes. <laughs> you don't have to whisper. <laughs> What's up? I don't think I know those. You, know, you don't know those countries? Oh, yeah. we're, this is a good study. We got South Africa, we got Panama, Canada, Australia. Canada? Yeah. Wendy, uh, I don't think I know where that one is. I know, I need to study. India, India, Canada, France, um, Bahrain, Cambodia, yeah, France is in here. Um, Ireland, France, again. Kazakhstan. Yeah, I mean, like, I guess since our last giveaways, there's more people enter, so there's plenty more pages. I don't know if I'm gonna go through every single one of them. Argentina, Slovenia, yeah, there's a, there's a lot. Indonesia, Argentina again. All right, so we're gonna do the drawing, and I'm gonna go here, click on winners, and then it says draw winners, and I'm gonna have my daughter do the honors. All right. <laughs> All right, go ahead and click on here. There's gonna be an advertisement. This is gonna be like two clicks. No, nope. no, don't click on the, the draw of winners right here. Click on that. Go. All right, here we go. And then winner to draw, one winner. We're not gonna draw a date range. So go ahead and click draw. And here we go, drawing 10%, 100%. Who is the winner? Who's, who's gonna be winning? It's gonna be Oscar from Panama, Oscar, you won. What did you win? What are, what are we giving away? 
<laughs> I have my daughter playing this. Here we go. We are giving away Weevil Lab just in case you missed it. And it, just in case you missed it, I do do giveaway like throughout the year. So if you didn't win, don't worry. I'm going to do another one pretty soon. So Oscar, I'm going to email you. Um, so I think you have about three days to um, respond to that email. Hopefully I hear from you. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you. Say, what are we saying when we close the video? See you later, folks. See you later, folks, is what she's going to say. So, all right, guys. Next time. Later.